For some 2,000 years, it was believed that heavier objects fall faster than lighter objects. This conventional bit of wisdom was based on observations made by the Greek philosopher Aristotle. And people believed him because it seemed like common sense. But in the 17th century, Galileo Galilei decided to test Aristotle's law. Legend has it that his test involved dropping balls of different masses from atop the Leaning Tower of Pisa. To see Galileo's experiment in action, I paid a visit to the NASA Glenn Research Center in Cleveland, Ohio, and met with Steve Simons, project manager for microgravity research. So this is the chamber? Yes, this is uh, the vacuum chamber. It goes uh, 400 feet into the ground, and we have to pump all the air out of that so that we can get a good microgravity drop. Now this, this goes back a long way, right, to Aristotle. Aristotle, yes it does, where Aristotle thought that objects with different masses would fall at different rates. Which seems reasonable. It seemed very reasonable because all of the um, history that people had with objects of different masses falling at different rates. For example, if you have a feather and a ping pong ball, both fairly light objects, but they will fall at different rates. Oh, yes. To illustrate the difference between two objects that are roughly the same size and shape, but obviously very different masses, is a golf ball and a ping pong ball. And if we drop those, they do drop at the same rate. Through Galileo's experiment, he found that a heavier object seems to fall faster than a lighter one because of air resistance. Air resistance slows a lighter object more than a heavier one. The other way we do it is if we shield the experiment, which we can simulate with this leaf, from the effects of air, then they will drop at the same rate. So what are we doing here? Well, we're in our uh, five-second zero-gravity facility, and we overcome the air resistance in this facility by pumping all of the air out of this uh, huge vacuum tank. We've got an experiment set up here today to check out new fire extinguishers for possible use on the International Space Station. So we're going to see if helium is a better fire extinguisher than carbon dioxide. Anita, if you would, please. So she's going to drop the big vehicle down. And the there it goes. goes. Five seconds in it. Hits. <laughs> and you can feel the floor yeah. shake when the, when the drop vehicle hits. <laughs> hey, Bill, let me take you down to the uh, bottom of the vacuum chamber. We can retrieve the experiment and see what happened. What fun. Galileo's challenge to Aristotle's law was a turning point in science. It marked the beginning of testing the accepted laws of science through experimentation. And Galileo's experiments with falling bodies led to our earliest understanding of acceleration caused by gravity. A force, nearly 400 years later, we would overcome. We owe our next great discovery to Sir Isaac Newton, who was born in England the same year that Galileo died. Legend has it that Newton was relaxing in an orchard one day when he saw an apple fall from a tree. This simple incident caused him to wonder why the apple had fallen to earth while the pale August moon continued to sail contentedly overhead. It was a eureka moment of insight for the young man. He realized that the same gravitational force acted on the apple and moon alike. If you think about it, you get the feeling that all through this apple orchard, there's some force that's pulling the apples down. And what was really great about it was that he extended it 
beyond the apple orchard and all the way out to the moon. He realized that this force was everywhere, and this was something that nobody had really thought about before. Newton reasoned that as the moon tries to travel in a straight line in space past the Earth, the Earth's gravitational force pulls the moon towards it. This keeps the moon trapped in orbit around the Earth. But the moon pulls on the Earth too, with its own gravitational force. Newton had discovered what is called the law of universal gravitation. Universal because the relationship applies to all bodies in the cosmos, including apples, moons, and planets. When the gravitational force of a large body, like the moon, acts upon the Earth, big things can happen, such as the ebb and flow of the Earth's oceans. The water in the ocean that's near the moon feels a greater pull than the water that's on the other side of the Earth, far from the moon. So it gets pulled out a little bit. And then as the Earth rotates, there's this kind of bulge in the water. And as the Earth rotates against it, it gets higher water and lower water. Newton's recognition that all objects have their own gravitational force was a landmark discovery in science. 